welcome to the Real Soul Podcast. You're the second guest. I see. I saw you had the first one earlier today. Yeah, yeah. You're the second guest. As as you know, this is the um pre-recording, so it oh, won't God. it won't be live until July, not in July 16 or something. So let's get let's cut to chase. I you know I, I I know a little about you, but I don't know everything about you, which is cool because we met on Instagram, right? right? So right, right. I want you to tell you know anybody that is listening, the Russo family, you know more about you and what you what made you like sneakers and what made you you know fall in love with sneakers. Okay, cool. So for everybody out there that's listening or watching, uh, my name is Izzy Santos. I am originally from Dominican Republic, but I grew up in um, New York City in Detroit, Michigan, where, which is where I currently reside, Detroit, Michigan. Um, I just moved here from Miami, so I'm still oh, getting wow. adjusted. I know, right? I'm still getting adjusted and, you know, uh, figuring some things out, you know, setting everything into place. Uh I'm a sneakerhead. Obviously, that's what we're here to talk about. Obviously, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, well, what do you guys want to know as far as like what started? Yeah, like how do how did the sneakers start for you? Like, what was your first sneakers, and what actually made you be like, okay, I think now I think I'm a sneakerhead. <laughs> okay, cool. So I've always been into sneakers as far as I, as far as I can remember, like from my young childhood. Um, my mother's actually a sneakerhead too. So, oh wow, um, it runs kinda, in the family. It runs in the family, so I got it from her. Uh, you know, well, between the both of my parents, to be honest, I was always rocking anything from New Balances to uh, Reebok, specifically Iverson, um, Air Force Ones. You know, that's a New York staple uptowns. Mm-hmm. Uh, uptowns. As far as each trade, I was rocking a lot of top tens and. Um, <clears throat> it didn't like really hit me that I was a sneakerhead. I want to say until I guess I was able to start buying it with my own money. <laughs> exactly. Then you know that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It just it it hit me out of nowhere, and um, the one of the first pairs that I actually bought were the uh, Air Max Plus uh, OGs. The uh, some people call them the Tigers uh, or the Sunset. I believe is the uh, actual name for them. Hmm. Um, I bought that pair. I had them when I was younger, and I knew I wanted them again. And when they re-released, I went and bought them. And from there, I was just buying like sneakers Not every stuff. week. <laughs> Not every <stuff>. week. <laughs> and I actually didn't know that there was a community for this till maybe about five, six years ago. Oh wow! Yeah, wow. I was just buying sneakers. Wow. I was just buying sneakers. Just well, because... <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've been in the community for like three years now. Me also, yeah. like, I didn't know there's, like, a whole culture about it. There's, like, a big follow. I know that, you know. Right. For example, I could have set up this podcast, even if, if not for the love of sneakers, and even not for the love of, okay, oh, we all communicating, you know, sharing pictures and all that. So, right. like you said, you, like, sneaker being a sneaker runs in your family, you know. So that that's something either way you might not even escape if you chose not to be like, okay, I don't want to collect sneakers. <laughs> I actually just got off of a break of buying sneakers too. Like I took a long break from September of last year mm-hmm. till about last month. A little yeah, fast, yeah. I like to call it. And I've just been buying sneakers like crazy since. It's good to take a break because when I, I did that too, whenever you take a break, then you start seeing the sneakers that you actually want to rock not the one that you just you know impulsive buy right right i was like i was uh purposely want to fast and everything that i really wanted was dropping but i couldn't go ahead and get it because i'm like you know what i'm gonna wait i put myself on a fast you know i'm gonna try to discipline myself and i'll tell you once once the fast was up <laughs> i bought every single pair that i wanted <laughs> so uh, how many pairs do you have right now and what's your favorite so i'm gonna ask two questions at the time how many pairs do you have was your favorite sneaker silhouette except from Jordan? Aside, aside from, Jordan. from Jordan, okay, mm-hmm. that's fair. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, wait, aside from just Jordan, or aside from Nike as a whole? No, just Jordan. Just Jordan, okay. Uh, I don't remember the exact number of sneakers that I have, but I know for sure in my current rotation, I have about between sixty and seventy pairs. Hmm. 
I recently sold some pairs, uh, I want to say over the last month, but I also acquired pairs back. So last time I actually did a full count, I had about maybe like 74 pairs, hmm. but it could be a little, a little less than that now. Um, my favorite silhouette aside from Jordan's, let's see. It would have to be MX95. MX95? MX95. I like that too. That's not bad. That's not bad. So MX95 is your favorite silhouette except from Jordan. Yeah, aside from Jordan, yeah. All right, all right. That's not bad. So what do you think about, let's say, in general, aside from like, the easy clog like the foam runner or anything what was your take about crocs because i know a lot of og sneakers or a lot of sneakers don't like crocs a lot of them see i'm a big believer in uh just rocking what you like you know mm -hmm. i'm not really one of those people who are against crocs uh some crocs are cool um i've never owned a pair i've okay. never had a pair okay uh but I have seen like some pretty dope pairs, you know, with the little gibbets, whatever they call it, the things they put mm -hmm. on them. You, you got I it. It's gibbets. Yeah, I have seen some cool like pairs that I wouldn't mind having, you know, especially like I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes these sneakers, some of these silhouettes be hurting our feet sometimes. So from what I hear, as far as comfort on these Crocs, I wouldn't mind having a pair. <laughs> it's very comfortable, no cap. But the Polox, the Soleil Bamberion, don't have the gibbets, so. That's nope. a whole different. Yeah, you can't pull in the jibbies. Do you cop the the the, the past easy easy day that went? Do you cop any shoe on that day? Uh, no, I didn't. To be honest, I didn't see anything I was interested in. Uh, as far you just as you, didn't go for any of it. I didn't go for nothing. Mm -hmm. I didn't go for I, any of. It. I I didn't go for none either because I was like, I just want I just want Kanye to release his own personal shoe. You know. Exactly. Like, nah, that's what I want. So, so far, so good. What have you noticed in the sneaker culture? Like, things brands need to implement. Like, now we got a lot of shoes that are sitting. Yeah. We got a lot of shoes that is way below what it actually, like, what they are supposed to do, which is good in a way and it's kind of bad in a way too. It's bad for the brands, but it's good for us, you know. Listen, I feel it's good for us, the like genuine sneakerheads, not even just sneakerheads, genuine consumers who mm -hmm. want to have access to sneakers. Like, I'm sure you can relate. We've all been there a thousand times, too many, getting up, waiting, you know, setting alarms, getting on the sneakers app or confirmed app. Stress over either or, yeah. And, you know, we don't get selected to, uh, get the pair we want we we take these l's and i just feel like that's crazy in today's world that we have to compete with one another in a sense just to be able to buy give our money away buy something that we want that that, that, that shit is wild. i mean excuse my language i don't know why no 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 you're good well, you're good <laughs> the but thing, that shit is wild that shit is the wild thing, it's like, always wow. set up though is because it's like the brand are setting up are setting us up with you know with each other like mm -hmm. We, we, we be demanding like okay yes the money yes the money but they don't want to supply us so they made the supply so limited and allegedly exactly they made the supply so limited so now even though it doesn't matter i just think it's because of the new generation that are coming they don't really care about shoes like that they, they prefer, don't care about the shoes or the they, they prefer, care about the name that's attached to it is that is that that's that's that and now I think they prefer just sitting at home playing their games, either with the slide or crux. <laughs> it's exactly, you see. So if you don't really, really like sneakers right now, with the uh I, you know, I rate on everything and the living cost and everything, people just don't want to buy sneakers like that unless if you're nah, an OG sneakerhead. Listen, everybody's got a sneaker head, and I actually kind of like that because this is like our thing. You have some people into cars, some people into, you know, sports, and this is kind of like our thing. It's our own little world, our own little scene. Mm -hmm. um, and that's dope. Uh, piggybacking off what I was saying earlier, 
about you know the having the access to these sneakers i'm actually kind of glad that a lot of these sneakers are sitting now because it gives more of us the people who genuinely want the sneakers to rock and not sell because no. you got to look at it that way as well um sneakers has become a big commerce as well to folks but um it gives us the opportunity to access and you know obtain these sneakers that we really want to wear True. versus having to pay outrageous resale prices resale price. so you talking about outrageous resale prices was the highest you've paid for a pair of shoe the highest i would pay or have paid you've paid <laughs> <laughs> i would have to say the highest i probably paid is like a little under nine over nine a little under nine. Under nine. That was not bad. You did. You yeah. haven't paid a thousand yet. Um, I, and I won't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'm not gonna say I won't because there's actually a pair. There's actually a pair that I'm considering uh, grabbing. Um, in a few months, maybe we'll see. My birthday's in August, so I oh, kind of gave myself this this uh this birthday goal idea that i wanted to have this this certain pair of sneakers by the day of so and right now it's aftermarket a little over a thousand so we'll see damn we'll see if I change my mind. we're gonna see we're gonna see so if we talk about the shoe yeah. you don't want to pay yourself for and all that what in the future like if you have someone that's like okay easy you've seen we, we, we've been seeing what you've been doing now we see that you are a true sneakerhead. We, mm -hmm. want, we want you to work with us on a shoe. What brand will you go after and why? <laughs> now you already know what brand. I'm going <laughs> okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it easy. Wait, except wait, from wait, Nike. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Except from Nike. Aside from Nike? Oh, aside man. from Nike. Okay, so aside from Nike... I would love to. I would love to do something with uh, Puma. Puma, Puma would be nice. Adidas, eh? I'm not too. I'm not gonna say I'm not against doing something with Adidas, but I, I like a lot of the lifestyle brands like Puma and uh, New Balance and um, uh, uh, something I I really don't see people wear a lot of times, but Diodora. Yeah. All right. That's not bad. That's not yeah. bad. You no. Know, if I want to choose, also, I'll go for Puma. I will pick Puma before Nike because Puma, yeah, yeah Puma is gonna give you know more like more creative attention. control, yeah, more creative control than Nike. Nike just have you ever cop any shoe below fifty dollars? Below fifty? Mm -hmm. Do <laughs> do uh slides and sandals? Count? No, 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 slides doesn't <laughs> no. count. Just nah, a regular I've, I've shoe. Never cop the pair. Never cop the pair under fifty. Wow. Wow. Okay, mm -hmm. let me go a little bit higher. How about under 100? Under 100, have I? Nope. Mm -mm. No. Wow. Mm. Under 150? Under 150, yes, I have. Yeah, okay. I just, I, actually, I'm just actually recently, actually, recently, I've copped a couple pairs under 150. So cool. I'm just waiting for that. Yes, that's why I, I have to go yeah. higher. <laughs> That's why I have to right. go higher. That's why I have to go higher. So, if there's any other country that you can exercise your sneaker, you know, your your love for sneakers, mm -hmm. and they have to be like this country doesn't have to be in Europe. It doesn't have to be in America or the West. You have to pick a country in Africa. What country will you be like? Yeah, this is the country I want to go. A country in Africa. Mm -hmm. To be a sneaker head in. Okay, I pick Guinea. Guinea? Why Guinea? Equatorial Guinea, yeah. Why? I had a friend from there growing okay. up. And okay. he looked like me. Like, they thought we were twins. Oh, wow. Yeah, but I, and I know, if I'm not mistaken, I know in Equatorial Guinea, some of them see Spanish, too. I think Spanish is one of the languages. Oh, and okay. that's one of my, my uh, first languages, uh, uh, you know, that I speak. And I've always just been fascinated with the culture there. So I, I would pick it. In. But one thing, though, if you pick Guinea, you know, so far as I'm concerned, the only the only uh country in Africa that has a uh, that have access to retail is like South Africa. I don't know any other country 
because I'm from Nigeria and I don't think they got a retail outlet out there. But really, you don't got nothing in Lagos. I don't. I don't think so. They only give them like, for instance, the uh the Nocta that just got released. Mm -hmm. You see how they're sitting on the site. So if any shoes are sitting like that, they take it back to Nigeria and sell it for retail price. Why is being uh, marked down out here? Uh, you know, so any like Travis Scott or any other shoe like that? Nope. No, there's because no they're, already, they're already sold before they even release. Exactly. There's no releases. <laughs> so if you go to Guinea, I'm thinking, how are you going to get all these shoes you got now? I guess I'm going to have to go to Nigeria first. <laughs> <laughs> if you go to Nigeria, you can't even have all these shoes either. <laughs> Your best hey, bet. I, I, I got a better chance of getting them in Nigeria than I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Your best bet is, is, probably, is probably South Africa. <laughs> nah, I don't, I, I don't want to go to South Africa. South That's... That's everybody's first choice when it comes to Africa. I want to go to everywhere right. else. Yeah, I want to go everywhere else first. Yeah, true, true. You should try to check it out. There's Ghana, there's Nigeria, there's Congo, there's Togo. There's different countries. There's a lot of countries there. And it's so sad that it's only one country I can think of that, that only have access to the retail, you know, the retail, mm -hmm. whatever. So right now, with what Nike is going through, I don't know. Because all these stockers, uh, uh, eBay, all these aftermarket apps, mm -hmm. most of these app like us, yeah, us out here, we don't really use them if we have access to it, you know, really retail. So it's these people that be using the app the most. They are they are they are locked into pay resale because a lot of people know I don't want to pay resale. I really pay retail. I know that if you. Out there, you got to pay resale. There's no way you got to do it. That's unfortunate. Very if unfortunate. They us, if they're making us do it here, I can imagine everybody else everywhere else having to. Everywhere well. else. Everywhere else. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. A, it's, a, it's a cold. It's a dangerous game. I know. I know. So do you have any upcoming sneaker uh, event you're looking forward to go? Or any sneaker? Because I know you'll be, going, you'll be going to a lot of events. Yeah, I try to make it to events when I can. Usually, that's typically like if some of my friends are, you know, affiliated with some of the, uh, you know, uh, not companies, but uh, groups, you know, throwing the events. I like to travel for those. Like, I'm part of like a little sneaker family. We like to we like to call it where we we all support each other mm -hmm. and we visit each other's cities. And it's I guess sneakers is just like the glue. Like we all just like vibing and hanging out with each mm -hmm. other. Okay, um and nine times out of ten, usually there is a sneak event going on, whether it be sneaker con or just little meet and greets and you know, kick expos. Um something upcoming. I am planning on going to an event in um August in St. Louis. Okay. Yeah, it'll be my first time out there. Uh I can't remember the name of it. Um but I just got the flyer for it the other day, so I'll share it with you. You know, once like once we get off of here, I'll share it with All you. All right, sure, sure. But other than that, that's the uh main one I'm going to, and of course, like uh, some of my friends are part of a group out in Atlanta, and they're doing you know like monthly events, uh, mm -hmm. monthly hangouts, and things of that nature. So I'm always in Atlanta frequently. So oh, that's cool. That's cool. I'm pretty sure. I like, think there's like I, I think the next gasso is gonna yeah the next gasso I think is in uh, ATL. But I don't know the date. But yeah, the events be cool because you get to meet a lot of people, you know, get a yeah. network, you know, stuff. Yeah, like you you're Baltimore, people you right? people, huh? Yeah, you I'm from Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah. And I'm I'm always there. I'm always in Baltimore. In you, Baltimore? Man. I'm always wow. in Baltimore. I was wow. in Baltimore earlier this year. So what I was in Baltimore last and the year before that one as well. So what 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 do you like about Baltimore? Baltimore's lady, like. I like it. Like, you know, me having an East Coast side of myself as well. Mm -hmm. um, I've, you know, ever since I was young, I was always going to D.C., coming to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's like, I know it like the back of my hand now. And It's like a ritual cool. to you now. <laughs> yeah, the people the people there are cool. And, you know, I have a lot, a lot of people out there. True, true. Shout out true. to my B-more folks. <laughs> true, true, true. Not bad, not bad. I wish I can throw more questions to you, but you've answered, like, the most question I want you to cover. So... <laughs> I appreciate you doing this with me. I appreciate you taking your time. If there's any... I appreciate if, you inviting me. Thank you. Yeah, if there's any, like, any young kid out there who just 
kind of listen to this podcast or watch this podcast video and they'll be like, oh, I, want, I also want to be a sneakerhead. What is the advice you're going to give them, like, due to your own experience? The advice that I would give to them, it would be the same advice I give all the time. Yo, rock what you like. Um, being a sneakerhead is not about having the hypest sneaker, the latest sneakers. It's not about uh, copying what's trending right now. It's all about having a genuine love for kicks, whether that be a uh, Jordan 1, uh, a Yeezy, or Fila's or something like that, yeah. or Converse. Mm -hmm. It's all about having a genuine sense of, you know, liking and a passion about your shoes. And it's not about having the most sneakers or having the least sneakers. You could be a sneakerhead with one pair of sneakers versus a sneakerhead with a thousand pairs. Shoot, I only got like 67, and we all know people who got hundreds and thousands. <laughs> thousand. Um, but ultimately, just be yourself. Be your most authentic self and rock what you like without caring about what anybody else says. In in the world, just be just be real. Just be real. Just be real. You don't have to you don't have to keep up with the Joneses. You don't have to cop everything just because everybody else is copying. copying it. Buy what you like when you want to, you know? Um, yep. Just enjoy it. It's, it's about yeah. enjoying it. It's oh. not about enjoying it for others. It's about yeah. enjoying it for yourself. And also, exactly. Also, wear your kicks. Wear your kicks. <laughs> Don't buy your kicks just to see them collecting dust. Stuck. Because 10 <laughs> years down the line, you're going to be mad when you try it to crumbles. put that shoe on and it's, it's, it's breaking down like marshmallows or something. Like, you're going to be mad. It's crumbling like, <laughs> like granola bars. You're going to be so yeah. mad. Wear your <laughs> shoes. That's what we buy them for. We spend all this money on our shoes and a lot of people don't wear them. Where you yeah. hit? Before we head out, I have this question for you. Have you ever trade a shoe or have you ever sold a shoe before, like your what, your collection? Yes, I actually just recently did that. Um, so there was a shoe that I wanted really, really bad last year that I actually copped for uh, for my birthday. I bought myself the Red Thunder Fours. Okay. Um, I know we are, most of us are familiar with that with that pair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I copped the red Thunder Fours, and I probably wore them like well, maybe once, once or twice. And most recently, remember I told you I went on that fast mm -hmm. from September to like last yeah, month on the break. Yeah. So due to that fast, back in November, I unfortunately did not cop the one sneaker that came out last November. If you already know, and I'll go ahead. Let me see if I can move some of the stuff out of the way. <laughs> I got shoes everywhere. I know. I know. I'm like in my basement. That, right that, that, that's what we got to deal with as a sneakerhead. I... <laughs> I'm in my basement right now. So. That's fine. Sheesh. Sheesh. That's the I that's recently the found. Sold. Yeah, I was surprised that I was able to sell that uh, Red Thunder 4 for as much as I did. And these not going too bad over uh, on, on resale anyway. Not in my opinion. It's, it's, it was a comfortable price for me. Right. And so I got rid of that pair. And it was like, it was difficult, not going to lie, because I was like stuck in between. Let me just keep these. I'll get the lost and founds eventually. But then I was like, no. That's one thing I'm learning too as a sneakerhead. Again, not trying to have the most sneakers. sneakers I can't yeah. let go stuff and let somebody else, you know, appreciate and get I their work. Yeah. That was what I do. I really, really like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's what I do because I'm a very I'm I'm a, I'm very big on Crocs. Like mm -hmm. I have a lot of Crocs shoes. So when the uh Easy Foam Runner debuted back in 2020, I guess, mm -hmm. I got it for like I think sixty or seventy dollars retail. I wish. <laughs> and the next thing I saw, it was going for like five something. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. I'm selling it. I'm I can't wear this, and I'm selling it. I have a lot of Crocs. So I probably won't wear this for runners. I sold it. That's true. I made like four something after uh, or four eighty on it. I was like, damn. Listen, I've you know, being an adult and you know having these adult bills and stuff like that. I've gone from having just be just from being a sneakerhead. I've gone from being broke from paying bills to having like over two three thousand dollars out of nowhere in a day's time just selling kicks. Like kicks. exactly. <laughs> Like being a sneakerhead, it has its pros and cons. Mm -hmm. Make you know, making like like you said, three thousand within three days. That's the pros, and the con is you can also be Hard broke for three days. 
<laughs> Look, if you make all that money just to just to spend it right back on just one. Just to spend it right back. So that was right what back. people don't know. Like you need you need to actually love this stuff before you can even you do. And that's another thing too. And it happens. It it comes with the territory. A lot of us sometimes we make impulse buys. True. Everybody impulse making purchases. And I've, I'm sure we've all had our moments where we regretted buying certain pairs of sneakers. By like, oh no, I shouldn't have did that. <laughs> or, or you you get it because you think you like it in a moment. Like and it. Or you after a while you really really don't. Yeah, or <laughs> so, you get it because of the hype. Like probably nice yeah. kicks or someone be hyping it. Like mm-hmm. oh yeah yeah, this is a crazy shoe. Like for for instance, I know a lot of people don't really like the big red boots. Those but, are interesting to me. I love weird stuff like that. You like it? I like them, and you know what? One of these days, I don't. Me personally, if you like it, the best time to get it is now. Is now because I wouldn't it's going mind for like two hundred. Yeah, I saw that recently too. I wouldn't mind having them, but I'm not too pressed into getting them. You know? Yeah, yeah. I like them, but I don't know. The only thing that I don't like about them is that it'll be better if they like kept their shape. Like when you wear them, yeah, I don't it crumbles. Like, kind of like, it, it should, yeah, yeah, I don't like yeah. like it. Like a cardboard. Yeah, I don't like yeah. that. Like that. Yeah. So it won't age well. Uh, is it that you wear? It? So like, it, the, like I said, the best time to copy it is now because one, once we're getting into winter, it's gonna be very expensive. It's gonna skyrocket. It's skyrocket. Gonna skyrocket. Yeah, so, that would be a nice winter sneaker too. To be honest, like to have one, like a big puffer jacket and those big red boots. <laughs> yeah. So you on the other on the other hand, you genuinely said you like it. I know a lot of people that. They don't see their saving it, but they bought it and end up with like 10 pairs. Mm-hmm. And they were trying to hold it. And then the price went down. And that's stuck what they get. It. They stuck with it. That's, <laughs> that's what they get. I have no sympathy for uh well, yeah, I have no sympathy for resellers at all. I have no sympathy for there's a difference between having a pair, you know, mm-hmm. selling it. Let's say you, you know, you have an inventory, you want to get rid of it to make room for new stuff, you know, more stuff that you want. There's a difference between that and you know, buying something just because it's there, just because you're looking forward to having a seller, hoping that price will gouge and you know, um trying to knock somebody over the head in resale prices. I don't really have no sympathy for people like that. I, I I feel you. I see your I see your side. But my question is, you know, most of these resellers are also sneakerheads. Mm, some, but I also see a lot who aren't. Cause I see my in my experience, I see more who aren't sneakerheads. Who aren't sneakerheads? Mm-hmm, who aren't? They they. That's why I said earlier, like sneakers is a commerce now. Like it's it, it's a hustle for people. People. True. 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 I mean, I look Nike also. I look them as a as a reseller. They because are they, they're, they're, they're not they're doing nothing the about they're not doing nothing about the bolt and all that. So to of me, they're also they're also a reseller, and I just think they love it. To be honest, they love the old drama, the old complain. You know, Let's, to push Nike the market. Are the, are the biggest resellers out here. <laughs> and you're crazy anybody out there listening to this you're crazy if you don't truly believe that mm-hmm. they're backdooring their own products she I, I can give you literally an example right i could give there you was, go ahead <laughs> there was there was this shoe that got released but people don't like it so at the end of the day it sat mm-hmm. but just because it was a collab they couldn't pull it at the outlet you know one thing I've been I've been going to the clearance store to the outlet store recently this year. Mm-hmm. I noticed like any shoe that is a collab, they don't put it on the floor. Nope. They won't put it on the floor. It doesn't matter if it's 150 and it fell to like $50, they won't put it on the floor. That's because it's in a box in a warehouse being sold through Goat StockX and Flight Club. That's same not- price. Then you go, you see everything. 57, 57, 57, yeah. 60. Think exactly. about it like this. It makes sense. And I always, I mention this a lot when I have this conversation with folks. It's business. At the end of the day, Nike is a business. Nike isn't True. the sneakerhead. True. Nike is the business. Exactly. Think about it like this. Um, What's the best way we could resell our own product when Nike caught wind that, you know, people are selling, you know, vintage sneakers, all these other sneakers, and they, they, they're recognizing the supply and demand for, let's say, for an example, all these collab, let's say a Travis Scott collab. Mm-hmm. Uh, Travis Scott's a, bit, a pretty big artist, we all know. 
um, Nike recognizes and acknowledges the supply and demand for, let's say, uh, what's the ones that recently came out? Those olive lows. Yeah. Everybody wants those, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody wanted them. It's a Travis Scott collab, of course. Some people don't even want it for the color, they just want it because of his name. Mm-hmm. Retail was like what 180, something like that. Mm-hmm. Or, or like on the low, like one yeah, he's like 180, 150, I think. 180, so. Yeah, something like that. Low, Regular yeah. Jordan one price. Nike realizes, oh, there are people willing to pay over a thousand close to a thousand dollars for that sneaker. Mm-hmm. Damn, we want part of that money. What's the best way for us to do that without saying hey we're going to start charging this now let's create third-party markets i.e goat and flight club which are sister companies um and have people buy it on there based off the su- supply and demand for their size but what's the best way to do that without people knowing that it's us doing it we're going to have this sneakers app we're going to release allegedly a limited sneaker that's not really mm. limited for what they failed to mention is that it's limited just on the app. Mm. Um, and they want people to think the bots are eating it all up, but no, they're releasing the number amount of X amount of pairs that they want to release on there because they know people are going to want that sneaker so bad because of the name attached to it that they have no other choice and are going to go to these third party apps to you know make that purchase makes what's sense. the mm-hmm. easiest way to do that without it falling back on them and create and catching the backlash let's create these markets and allow people to sell their own product on their own inventory of shoes that way no one will ever know where the shoe is coming from allegedly coming all from yeah right yeah. all that instant ship and oh excuse me my phone oh all You're that good inst- you never know the seller you don't know who's mm-hmm. shipping it you don't know nothing but when you see instant ship, that's exactly who it's coming from, these factories. Factories, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because I've been copying a lot of shoes from Go, and I noticed, like, any shoes that have same price on different sizes, mm-hmm. if you order it, it's like an instant ship. Within oh, two yeah. days, it's on your doorstep. I'll be like, it's, oh. It's, it's marketing, and it's easy. It's business. So, I could, like, that, that's, that's smart. That's smart moves. That's smart moves. Therefore, they're, they're still getting, you know, a piece of that bigger revenue. Mm-hmm. versus selling every single pair retail it's a pro for them but a con for us because mm-hmm. us as genuine consumers we get knocked over the head and you know we're, we're spending more money out of our pocket for something that we wish we could have got a retail price and they're, they're they're winning both ways because us mm-hmm. we're gonna be complaining oh the butt are eating it up and then they have more you know more chance to tackle the butts <laughs> <laughs> allegedly <laughs> They're exactly exactly so yeah it makes sense it all makes sense now mm-hmm. well that's some gym right there that's a gym right there i appreciate you you know coming here to talk about sneaker with me as you can see i'm tired i did a whole like an hour interview with the first guest so yeah yeah so like yeah i'm like tired and he's like what's the time right now it is 9 like 44 so I was, I was, I'm, I'm very happy to di- to get this out of the way because I really, 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 really want to get you on because I, it. I see what you be doing. <laughs> you actually I caught see... me by surprise. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I see what you be doing. I see, you know, how the love for sneakers for you is real and genuine, and that was the main reason I bought you here because, I mean, to some it might be like, oh, he's an ibis, but to me, I know you're not an ibis, so. Thank you. I truly appreciate that. Listen, I just I just love sneakers. I love my sneakers. I love rocking my sneakers. And whether that be, uh, like I always tell people, hype and all that stuff is subjective. So what may be hype to one person may not be hype to me. I just, I just love, it. It just I love it. it. If the story makes sense, the, 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 the uh, design makes sense, mm-hmm. just go for it. So yeah, you have it, guys. I'm ending this podcast with Easy Santos. I appreciate him, you know, coming to show me love and support. And any advice he gave, like he dropped in on this podcast, please make use of it as a sneakerhead. And where can people follow you on on social media? Yo, uh, you all can find me on Instagram at Izzy Got Soul. That's Soul S O L E. <laughs> and um, I'm on Twitter as well at Carmine Izzy. Easy. All right. All right. There you have it. There you have it. And you already know 
This is your boy Soli Music, and you're listening to the Real Soul Podcast. And we out. Well, y'all, shout out to you for inviting me again. I'm looking forward to coming on again one of these days. I appreciate it. Definitely, definitely. definitely. Part two coming soon. Part two coming soon. <laughs> Safe. Have a good night, my bro. You too, bro.